We're heading down to La Quinta, my friend's house, Cole. Uh, he is a way, way better hobbyist than I am, and he has made me a little Zoa frag rock. So I need to go pick that up first so that we can go back to the gallery and actually build our Zoa rock. We have a one week green bubble tip update. Remember I put the green bubble tip anemone in here. I was able to pull it out about a week ago. And let's take a peek here. So I gotta be honest with you guys. I have not been as attentive to this bubble tip as I have with the other ones. For example, there have been a couple days that I've forgotten to give antibiotics. And I haven't done a water change in a couple days. So mea culpa there. It's actually looking decently well, but what we're gonna do now, I think, is gonna give it that full water change and then put 500 more milligrams of Cipro. This is the Cipro that I'm using, Fish Aid. I'm almost out because I've been using so much of it. So I'm gonna buy some more. Let's do that water change and put some more Cipro in the tank. Water change is done, more antibiotics have been added. I'm gonna treat this green bubble tip anemone for a few more days, but I'm probably gonna leave it in here for a couple weeks, just doing a lot of water changes, just trying to give it an easy life and hopefully it will recover. But I really think the tide is turning. Check this out, check this out. I don't wanna do a big, huge update, but there is anemone one, it used to be a small anemone. Look at that now. Here is anemone two, looking healthy. And you ready for the watermelon? Look at that, the color is not back but it's even hosting a clown fish. So things are headed in the right direction. So I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing. I've had the clowns for about a month now, and there were originally 12 in there. And I moved the two long fin clowns, and then one of them had that tragic death on top of the fishnet. So there is aggression issues with the nine remaining. You can see here that some of them have their own hiding spots. This guy right here likes to wedge himself into the rock. And for some reason, that seems to work against the bigger fish. There's one fish right here who hides right underneath this rock. And you can see he gets chased out sometime by, by one of the bigger ones. What I'm really watching for, though, is I'm watching if they have nipped fins and if they're able to eat. And so far, all nine of them are. This is a really popular spot. They like to hang above the Max Beck Gyre but only for a little while because then eventually the two main clownfish, definitely the two largest clownfish will come in and say, get away because they kind of like to hang out in the bottom right hand corner. But as of now, by the way, these are the two apex predators, if you will. They are the, the paired couple. They seem to be paired and they're the two biggest ones. And they like to live in the bottom right hand corner of the tank and they go around and kind of bully everybody else. But since there's seven other clownfish, they really do seem to be able to spread the aggression out. And this tank is, is three feet wide. You know, I wish it was four feet wide because, you know, clownfish need like a two foot area. So they do tend to go all over. But you can see, like, you can see right here in the bottom right and in the middle, the two hiding spots. And there are a few different hiding spots that seem to work well enough. They all come out. They all feed. I've been feeding this tank frozen food twice a day. Uh, mysis shrimp basically mini mysis shrimp and then it also gets a little bit of of pellet food as well just just one time a day i really want to get some more anemones in there give them some more habitat and so as long as these anemones keep doing well i will eventually buy some more anemones they're only hosting one only that that uh watermelon anemone started hosting so i do want to spread out some of that aggression but yeah overall so far so good 
again, this is an experiment. As they get bigger, as they get more habitat, is it going to work? Is it not going to work? You definitely want to stay tuned so you can see whether or not you can do this in basically a 40-gallon breeder tank. Cyano update. Uh, I've really probably never, ever actually gotten rid of cyano in this tank. All I'm doing is I'm doing some manual removal. You'll see it there on the sand bed and you'll see it all over the sand bed. See that all over the sand bed. It was also growing on the rocks and it still tends to grow on the rocks every couple days. But all I'm doing is I'm removing it every few days. I'm scraping it off when I see it. And then I'm just dosing. I've had this extra stability lying around forever. And so I'm putting in a cap full a day, which I know some people would say you probably shouldn't do that. You're going to mess up the whole balance. But really, the only other option I have is treat it with ChemiClean. Unless you guys have some really good way of getting rid of it. It's not concerning. It's not... It's not suffocating anything. I mean, look here, like it's it's not causing any problems. It's just kind of ugly looking, but all my corals are fine. So I'm just gonna keep doing what I'm doing. Unless you guys have a really safe, non-invasive way to remove and get rid of the cyanobacteria, then put a comment below because I'd really appreciate that. But other than that, I mean, look at this. Everything's fine, everything's happy. It's really just not a concern. The old me would have been like, oh no, time to fix everything and panic. But as long as the livestock healthy, you know, that's really all that matters to me. Hi, Sarah Matthew. Just got back from a bike ride. Sorry. You guys have been panicking me this week. From last week's video, there were a few comments about bio pellets and about, oh, a cup seems like it's way too much. Or some people just right out being like, dude, you're stupid. Why are you using bio pellets? To so some people telling me some clearly inaccurate things, which is like, why are you doing bio pellets? Now you have to carbon dose when bio pellets are carbon dosing. Anyway. Besides the point. So you guys have panicked me a little bit. So now I'm considering maybe what I should do is remove half of the bio pellets. I had a cup in there and I could take that down to a quarter cup. You know, now's the time to do it if I'm gonna do it because if I wait too long, it's gonna take over. So I think I'm gonna do that. We'll put it in a quarter cup, but you know what? You guys have just said, Matthew, Worldwide Corals doesn't even panic until their nitrates are over 30. And I've heard people be like, dude, don't even panic until it's like 50. So I guess I'm just panicking for no reason because mine are like 20 to 25. I've always just thought maybe it will hinder coral growth, but obviously zero nitrates is far worse. So I think what we'll do, let's remove half of the bio pellets and then we'll see what that does. I still wanna try out the bio pellet reactor on this tank just because there is no other way besides a wet skim and mechanical filtration to get rid of those nitrates because there just isn't much ceramic media in there. So. I wanna try it out, I've never tried it out. Go ahead and leave a nasty comment below if you think I'm an idiot. Although, if you do YouTube, you realize that people don't need permission to call you an idiot. It just goes to the territory. Okay, let's go remove half those bio pellets. enough so now we're at a half a cup we're gonna leave it there i think a half a cup will be a decent amount hopefully it won't reduce the nitrates too much but i test every other day so i'm really not that concerned we'll see how it goes almost ready to start the Zoa garden, the Zoa rock. I got most of my fragging gear out, my glues. I'm gonna do a little dip process. But the first thing I wanna do is I wanna watch a video from my friend Remy over Bahama Llama Coral. He was nice enough to say I could show this clip. Check out this video. He is like the Zoa guru. Really, really good at Zoas and makes beautiful Zoa rocks, high-end stuff. So I'm gonna re-watch his video real quick. I'll put a link down below. Check it out if you're interested in doing this. 
because he gives some really good tips and I just wanna see how he does it so that I can basically copy what he does and do it myself. So let's watch that real quick. All I can say is, thank goodness I watched that video by Remy. I just picked up so many tips. <laughs> I would just, some mistakes I would have made. So, Bahamalama Goral, thank you. I've laid everything out that I think I need here. I'll try to get a couple different angles here for you guys. This is just uh, the piece of rubble rock I'm gonna be using. I also have a frag plug because I have uh, an encrusting Monty that I need to put on that frag plug. And then, because I got some Zoa frags from my buddy Cole, I want to dip them and I'm just gonna use the Coral RX. Nothing fancy here, but I think just the Coral, Coral RX will work fine. So we're gonna dip it here, rinse it here, and then the final pieces will go here. And then I got my goggles, my gloves, my mask, glues, different size bone cutters, and we're just gonna go for it. They've been in here for a while now. I'm gonna mask up real quick. I have way more Zoas than I realized. So I, um, I, I there, there's, there's no way I can use them all. So I got a couple frag plugs over here. I'm gonna pull them off as much as I can before I rinse them and then we'll move them over to the side and then we'll go back and we'll do a better job of trimming them all. I know Zoas probably aren't the most toxic, but whatever that palytoxin is scares the bejesus out of me. See, look, like, look at this. Huh? Look at how many are on there. I'm gonna make a mess. It's just how it's gonna be. There we go. Okay, so that's better. See all right? Gonna put them in here, just gonna give them a quick rinse. And move them over here. Let's start with the encrusting Monty cap. One down. Okay, now comes the hard part. I just, I just, I've never done this. So, and I can't tell at all what they are when they're pulled in. Maybe we'll just start by trimming them a little bit more. I like these frag plugs, these frag discs or whatever they are. They're the ones that are made out of the oregonite because they cut so much easier than, than the fired ones, you know? I'll speed this up for you guys. You know, sit here and stare at this, okay? Like, how am I supposed to, can't cut around that, you know? It's, it's all over. I think I might just cut through the middle of it instead. Let's take a peek. Look how much we cut it down. All right, let's get to gluing. I'm just gonna have to basically randomly put stuff on. I'm gonna go with what I think looks most colorful and then put that on the other side of the rock. So let's try this, here we go. Just so you guys know, I have never done this before. So when you watch me and you're like, you're doing it wrong, of course I'm doing it wrong. I've never done it before. You know what, the only way I'm gonna learn is by doing it, so. I know I don't wanna put them too close together, right? I know that much. Give them room to grow. And if I knew what I was doing, I would, I, Dios mio, I would probably be much more careful about like color selection, but I just, I just don't know, you know? So, you don't know what you don't know. The only way I've learned this hobby, that you, you get good at something, is just to do it, so. I'm gonna learn from this, I'm gonna make mistakes doing this, and then I'll be better next time. All right, that's it, everybody. That's it. What it looks like. Okay, here we go. Well, there she is, everybody, in all her glory. I moved a couple other corals over, which don't quite work here. The flow is a little bit too high because it comes all the way from the back and then it goes whoosh. And I had this mushroom up there in the front. Man, it was way too much flow. But anyway, that's another story for another day. Here's the Zola rock. Sorry, it's very blue. I like all the colors. I don't think they really go together at all. <laughs> but, you know, we'll see. It's going to grow out. I think it's going to look just fine. You know what? And for a first time, it's going to be cool. It's going to be a cool experiment. Hopefully I'll learn a lot about Zoas by doing this. I'm just going to keep stuffing this tank with corals from over here over the next few weeks. So I am hoping that this 
will be packed within a few weeks. finished made the zoo rock we moved over some corals that's fantastic i have two jbj tanks coming two and they're gonna put them together and have one large freight package so maybe next tuesday i can show you guys the jbjs i haven't revealed yet which one the seahorse tank macroalgae tank is gonna be but it is a jbj tank so stay tuned until next week if you like this video give it a thumbs up consider subscribing to my first fish tank as always happy reefing everybody be well see you next time